Hi there, I'm Dr. Ryan Heron with Meta Applications. In this video, I'll be introducing eight key ethical concepts and seeing how they apply to a sample scenario. It is important to understand these concepts both for the ethical reasoning stations at your medical school interviews, as well as for your future career as a doctor. The first term we will explore is autonomy. This concept is central to most ethics questions and states, all persons are autonomous beings and have a fundamental right to self-determination. In a healthcare sense, autonomy means all competent patients are self-determining decision makers. They have the right to accept or decline any healthcare intervention. Note the word competent. Some patients like the very young or mentally disabled may not be autonomous decision makers if they lack the capacity to do so. They still have the right to autonomous decision making, but their inability to exercise that right means someone else must make decisions for them. This someone else is a substitute decision maker, which we'll talk about shortly. Our next concept is beneficence. Beneficence means everyone has a duty to advance the good of others if it is possible to do so without undue risk to oneself. You can think of this as the do-good principle. This is what doctors aim to do, after all, to provide beneficial treatment to help each individual. But what counts as good? It is important to note what counts as advancing the good of an individual is always subjective and relative to that individual's values, not those of the healthcare professionals or anyone else. Following beneficence, the principle of non-maleficence states everyone has a duty to prevent harm to others. You can think of this as the do no harm or keep patients from harm principle. What counts as harm? Again, what counts as harm is subjective and relative to the values of the recipient, not those of the healthcare professionals. To protect the right of autonomy, medical treatment may only be administered if there is informed consent. Informed means a person has received all the information that a reasonable person would require in order to make a decision in the same circumstances. As well, that person needs to have had all of their questions answered. A person can only give informed consent if they have capacity to do so. Capacity requires the ability to understand relevant information and to appreciate the reasonably foreseeable consequences. So what happens when the patient is incompetent and cannot exercise the right of informed consent? A substitute decision maker must make treatment decisions based on the values of the patient. These decisions should come as close as possible to the choices the patient would have made if they were competent. Substitute decision makers are people who know the patient well, such as their spouse, children, or parents. A patient can help communicate their wishes to the substitute decision maker and healthcare professionals through an advance directive. An advance directive is directions given by a competent individual concerning what decisions should be made and or specifying who should make these decisions in the event they become incompetent. An example would be a do not resuscitate order on an elderly patient's chart. A healthcare professional has a duty to take all reasonable steps to find out if an incompetent patient has an advance directive naming a substitute decision maker or directing their medical care. If there is an advance directive reasonably available and it applies to the situation at hand, it must be followed, even if it means the patient might die. However, Healthcare providers will not follow directives that are illegal or unethical. Some emergency situations will require immediate action to prevent serious and imminent harm to the patient. In these situations, the physician can give medically necessary treatment without patient consent if all of the following applies. The patient lacks capacity to give consent. There is no reasonably available advanced directive that is specific to the case. And no substitute decision maker is reasonably available to make the relevant decision. This is called the doctrine of emergency. An 18-year-old female arrives in the emergency room following a car accident. She is bleeding profusely from a puncture wound and has lost so much blood she is now unconscious. Her vital signs are rapidly declining and she may die without an urgent blood transfusion. Just before the blood arrives, a nurse finds a recently signed card from Jehovah's Witnesses Church in the patient's purse. This card states the patient refuses blood transfusions under any circumstance. What would you do? The big question here is to administer a blood transfusion or not. 
To answer this, let's start by looking at the ethical concepts at play. Pause the video and think about what concepts might apply to this case. Okay, let's see how you did. Autonomy is central to this case. The patient has a right to decide what happens to her body and in this case does not wish to receive a blood transfusion. The patient is unconscious so lacks capacity to give informed consent. In these situations, consent would normally have to be given by a substitute decision maker and the healthcare professionals have a duty to take all reasonable steps to find an available substitute decision maker. In this situation though, there may not even be enough time for that. Luckily, we know the patient's values because she has a card that acts as an advanced directive. Even if a substitute decision maker were available, they should be respecting this advanced directive when making decisions on the patient's behalf. You may be asking, what about the doctrine of emergency? This is an urgent life or death emergency, but this doctrine does not apply to this case. Remember, it only comes into play when there is no advanced directive and if no substitute decision maker is available. Beneficence can also be applied to this case as the doctor wishes to advance the good of the patient, namely saving her life. But remember, what counts as doing good or harm is always relative to that individual's values, not the treating physician's. The patient is unconscious, but we still know her values from the signed Jehovah's Witnesses card. Now that we have identified the main ethical concepts, which two do you think should take priority in this case? Autonomy and advanced directive should take priority here. Ignoring this patient's advanced directive would violate her autonomy and would actually constitute harm in an ethical sense. This is a real-life case, and the doctor that gave her blood was subsequently sued and found liable for damages for not following the advanced directive. In summary, the most ethical solution to this scenario would be to not give the blood transfusion, as this best upholds the patient's autonomy and values. Thanks for watching, and good luck on your interviews!